Hi, it's Jeffer. Recently, I reread some books I have about the amazing late artist Frank Frazetta. And if you aren't familiar with his work and like fantasy art, you should really check him out. If you already know about him, no doubt you're aware that he's considered by many to be a master. His paintings vibrate with energy and power. And though the bulk of his work was created in the 1950s through the 1980s, it looks like it was created yesterday. I've read that he worked primarily from his imagination rather than using photos or live models. And he said his ability to capture characters' gestures in a real and very dynamic way came from both his intimate knowledge of anatomy and from working as a comic book artist for years and having to churn out pages and pages of characters quickly without using references. On the other hand, I've noticed that many of us kind of fudge the muscles on our characters and it seems we especially neglect the back. When showing a character from behind, backs can just wind up looking like a jumble of misplaced bumps and ridges, due in part to not really knowing or understanding what's going on below the surface under the skin. Being reminded that Frazetta had anatomy, front, back, sideways, and upside down nailed to the wall, I decided to renew my own anatomy studies, and this is the first one I've made in a while. The image I used for this study was from a medical illustration from the 1800s by an artist named Nicholas Henri Jacob, and he did hundreds of amazing anatomical illustrations for the complete treatise of human anatomy, I think the one that's reprinted right now weighs about 25 pounds, and it's 700 plus pages of illustrations by Jacob. He was a student of French realist painter Jacques-Louis David, and uh, Jacob's illustrations are amazing in their detail. And I decided the one I used in this study would make an excellent reference. I always find when doing these detailed studies that I learn so much more from them than just looking at an image alone. And in this case, that was certainly true. And otherwise, a lot of anatomy illustrations tend to simplify things and just group muscles together. So for example, rather than showing how the lat muscles wind together, they just show them connecting as a mass under the arm. Another aspect of doing these detailed studies is simply developing more skill as a painter. There's so much emphasis placed on impressionistic art and painting very loosely right now, and I certainly understand that school. But in my opinion, you can always dial back from realism, but it's a lot harder to go from a very loose style to more detailed if you're suddenly called to do that by a job or a client. Recently, I saw some amazing hyper-realistic paintings from Utah artist Patrick Kramer, and I like what he said about his art, and I quote, Being a perfectionist, I've always been considering art as an outlet for my slightly obsessive personality. I studied painting in college and experimented with hyper-realism as a way of perfecting my craft. I never intended to pursue the style, but found it hard to give up as it suited my nature. So whatever style suits you, then chase after it with no apologies. And if on the other hand, a style doesn't, then that's fine too. And maybe we can all learn to appreciate each other's talents and interests. Well, here we are at the end of this video. Thanks as always for watching. Please check out my website and blog for more examples of my artwork. I'll put links in the video description below. And please subscribe to and check out my YouTube channel where I've posted many more art-related videos. Thanks again for watching, and have a good one. Ciao for now.